Opposition to possible legislative action to modify the current structure of school choice dominated the discussion at the Taconic and Green Regional School District's annual meeting at the Courier Memorial School in Danby on Tuesday, February 28th, as several board members and local education leaders hope to head off any restrictions on public dollars flowing to independent schools that are currently allowed. A decision by the U.S. Supreme Court last year held that if a state gives money to one independent school, it must give to all, including explicitly religious schools. Finding a workaround to that which would allow Vermont's historic school choice model, where if a town does not offer a public school at a student's grade level, they can direct public tax dollars to pay for tuition costs at independent secondary schools like Burn Burton Academy in Manchester and Long Trail School in Dorset. That's the case with the Taconic and Green School District's nine towns, Sunderland, Manchester, Dorset, Danby, Mount Tabor, Peru, Landgrove, Weston, and Londonderry, since the school district does not operate its own public high school. Others go to independent schools located within the district or to other schools elsewhere. One article on the school district's warning that voters will weigh in on during Australian ballot voting on Tuesday, March 7th, Vermont's town meeting day, or through early voting before then, advises the state legislature and governor that the electorate supports the current structure of independent schools and opposes efforts to change the current structure in a way that eliminates educational possibilities made possible by the current structure of high school choice. At one point, school directors talked directly to some of the state legislators who had dialed into the meeting. Uh, The opponents of choice, the opponents of independent schools have seized on Bacon try to turn it into, uh, use it as a vehicle for doing the damage to, to our system that they have uh, wanted to do for a long time. Um, to state the obvious, H-258 uh, is, if it were to be taken up and move forward, would represent an existential threat for our communities, for our kids, for our communities, and, uh, and really our way of life in our, uh, our district. Herb Ogden, the chairman of the Taconic and Green School Board, also spoke to the question. It's obvious, I'm sure, something in the industry you're watching very closely. And uh, do you have any preferred outcome from a legislative standpoint on this? Well, I can tell you what I what I hope does not come out of it, which would be to instantly shut off all public money to, to any non-public school, because that would be a catastrophe here. Um, the superintendent has figured out where are which existing public high schools our kids could go to and I think she concluded maybe there's capacity but it would involve sending X number of kids south, X number of kids north, X number of kids east and you totally destroy the, the community aspect of a school if you did that. Um, what I personally would like is more thought about what constitutes a public school the way the Supreme Court in the in the um, main case identified one. I don't think a public school necessarily has to be one that it is run by an elected school board, for example. You have other states where there are charter schools and they are still public schools. So I would like more consideration of transforming at least some of our presently totally private schools into something that the U.S. Supreme Court would say still qualifies as a public school because you can't make a public school spend money on religious education and therefore you could, you could finally comply with the Vermont Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. Otherwise, the school board directors made short work of the discussion items and review of the articles that will be voted on during Australian balloting. Those include a budget proposal of about $36.8 million, about a 6% increase from last year's budget of $34.5 million. Voters will be asked to approve topping up reserve funds for buses, technology equipment, and buildings and grounds. Voters will also be asked to approve transferring any general fund surplus to the buildings and grounds reserve fund. Voters will also be asked to approve a roughly 4% increase in the tuition rate at Burn Burden Academy bumping it up to $19,987 for a student coming from a sending district town. That would be up from its current level of $19,200. 
It's been a difficult few years for schools as they've coped with the impacts of the COVID pandemic. Several have struggled with staffing and teaching shortages. After the meeting, we talked with school superintendent Randy Lowe on how that effort is going. I would say that there are a number of, a number of impacts of, of the pandemic it, that impact education. For sure, we've got really interesting developmental patterns with students. You would say that there's some kind of accelerated growth and then there's some really depreciated growth. Like, um, so, so it's all over the place. A lot of um, d- um, depressed social emotional skills, not depressed like depression. We're seeing some of that too, but d- delayed delayed social emotional development from students um, students especially young young children who um, who sort of don't have the typical development we see in our youngsters our, our four-year-olds five-year-olds six-year-olds who who haven't had a lot of socialization with kids we see we see delays we we saw academic delays but it, for the most part we're running pretty average according to national pre-pandemic levels. So at this point, we don't have significant delays across the boards academically. Um, But we see kids struggling with interpersonal skills with each other. Um, The pandemic definitely disrupted their typical development um, of relationships with peers. And so we see that playing out. Our uh, intermediate grade students, like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, struggle with how to problem solve, work through interpersonal challenges that they have with peers. Um, And I think the other aspect of pandemic impact we see are people in the communities. We don't have that network of of, um, like substitute supports. Those people who kind of would come in and help out and volunteer. People, people are, have remote jobs or they're doing different things. And so some of that community involvement isn't, isn't there for our schools the way that it was before the pandemic. And I hope that that returns, but at this point, we're still seeing a lot, of, um, uh, a lot fewer people who are entering our schools and, and subbing and helping out that way. Voters on March 7th, who will be voting at the various voting locations in all nine towns in the district, We'll also be electing or re-electing school directors for Danby, Dorset, Landgrove, Mount Tabor, Peru, and Sunderland. For the GNAT-TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.